Indira Gandhi Memorial Trust if assessee has donated the limit is not applicable here and 50% of the amount is exempted for the deduction ATTTA allows individual HF to claim tax deduction up to 10,000 on interest earned from savings account this is for savings account Contribution to unrecognized provident fund is not eligible for deduction here. Warm welcome to Fifth Son BBA students. In the previous session, we have discussed deduction under section 80C, 80CCC, and 80CCD, 80DD, and 80DDB. In today's session, we are going to discuss the remaining section under section 80G, whatever we have here, and 80GG, and other section of under section 80, whatever the deduct eligible deductions are. El Benefits are there for the assessee will be discussed here. I am Professor Rajesh L.A. from Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. The first concept we have taken here under Section 80G, this section relates to donations. Any donations given by the assessee during previous year, you can claim the deduction under section 80G and for that we have certain rules and regulations are there. Deduction is available for all assessees. Under this section, deduction is available for donations made by the assessee to approved funds and the charitable institution as per the approval given by the income tax authorities and other part here. The following donation does not qualify for deduction. Donations to an individual, donations in kind that is by giving car or any asset. So if you are giving that is not considered as donation. Donation paid in excess of 2000 in cash. I should not make any payment of donation in cash above 2000. Donations to institutions, funds, organization not approved by the Commissioner of Income Tax. Donation to a political party cannot be considered as donation here. Donation made for the benefit of the particular community, religion, that cannot be considered for the deductions. So now we have here three different groups that is we have considered here. Group 1 we are discussing any donation made by the assessee for Jawaharlal Nehru Memorial Fund. Maximum limit is not applicable here. 50% of the amount donated by the assessee is eligible for the deduction. Indira Gandhi Memorial Trust, if assessee has donated, the limit is not applicable here and 50% of the amount is exempted for the deduction. Rajiv Gandhi Foundation, the same concept what we have here and even for the Prime Minister Drought Relief Fund, limit is not applicable and 50% is the rate of deduction eligible for the assessee. We have plenty other than this one. We have given the major four where assessee can donate the funds and get the benefit for the deductions. The group two what we have here National Children Fund, if the assessee has deposited or donated any amount here, maximum limit is not applicable here, 100% is eligible for deduction. National Defense Fund, Africa Fund, Swachh Bharat Kosh and Zilla Saksharat Samiti, Clean Ganga Fund. If assessee has donated to any of this fund, the limit is not applicable here. The maximum amount will be a 100% of the amount donated by him is eligible to claim the deduction under section 80G during previous year if he has donated. If he has donated. Group 3. Any charitable institutions approved by the Commissioner of Income Tax here the limit is applicable and only 50% is allowed for the deduction. Any notified temple, mosque, gurudwar, church, again the limit is here and you can claim only 50% of the donated amount for the deduction. Any authority engaged in promoting family planning, so then again the limit is applicable here and 50% is eligible for deduction. Any approved educational institution not 
national eminence in such case the limit is applicable here and 50% is the amount of donation eligible for the deduction for the SSC during previous year. Next we have here under section 80 GG this is the deduction section is benefited for the individual who is staying in a rented house and paying rent for the property what is occupied here and who is doing business or other part here where he is earning the source of income not as a salary in such cases the SSC can claim the deduction but there are certain conditions are there the first condition 5000 per month rent paid over 10 percent of the income 25 percent of the total income so here in these three whichever is least one will be considered for the deduction and main condition is here the SSC should not own any house or re residential property or any commercial property in his name or spouse name or children name and HUF in the place of employment you must also live in a rented accommodation and pay regular rent. See for both individuals and HUF they are saying that if they are staying in a rented house and where, where they are not getting income from salary the income what they are getting either it may be from business or profession whatever they are earning here they can claim the benefit law equal to HRA under section 80 GG only if SSC doesn't owns any property in his name or spouse name or children name so then he will be eligible to claim the deduction and the conditions are 5000 per month next one rent paid over 10 percent of income 25 percent of total income whatever it is in this one whichever is least least one you can claim for the deduction next one we have here under section 80 tta and 80 ttb 80 tta allows individual hf to claim tax deduction up to 10000 on interest earned from savings account this is for savings account savings account moreover taxpayers need to be below 60 years of age to claim so it, it is applicable only for the individuals who are less than age of 60 above 60 years cannot claim the benefit of ATTTA deduction. ATTTB is the senior citizen claim tax deduction up to 50,000 on the interest on the income from deposits in the bank or post office and this section it allows the interest from various accounts such as savings account fixed deposit. ATTTA is for individuals ATTTB is for individuals this is less than 60 years and this is above 60 years and here it may be savings fixed deposits or investment in bank or post office whatever it is there if it's claiming any interest on these concepts it can claim the deduction under section ATTTB and the limit what we are going to get they are going to mention clearly that it is 50,000 is eligible where you can claim the deduction under section 80 TTB. Next we have here 80 U this is a section where it is totally 100% disability person who is depending on the SSC can claim 75,000 while those with major disabilities can claim up to 1,25,000. So if it is a normal a disease or any diseases are there so for such type of treatment has been given maximum claim deduction can claim 75,000 and if it is a totally severe if the amount is paid they can claim a deduction up to 1,25,000. So let us consider one problem for section 80c here clearly understand that one I am Mr. Srinath here where you have to calculate and guide me what is the total amount of deduction can be claimed by me under section 80C for the assessment year 2023-24. Life insurance premium paid on Srinath's life 2700. Life insurance premium paid on spouse's life is 8000. Married daughter 4000. Dependent sister 10000. Repayment of loan taken for 
from LIC for purchase of commercial house property, 30,000. Contribution towards unrecognized provident fund, 30,000. Tuition fees of data, 22,000. Life insurance premium on, on the life of his major son, due on 1st December 2022, 3,000, but paid on 1st May 2023. Accrued interest on National Savings Certificate 5,000, contribution to Public Provident Fund in the name of the mother 20,000, 8,000 in Sukanya Samruddhi scheme in the name of his minor daughter. So these are the savings whatever I have made during previous year. So what are the benefit I am going to get? Any LIC premium paid on the assessee's life is eligible. Insurance premium paid on spouse life is eligible. LIC premium on married daughter's life is eligible. LIC premium on dependent sister's life is not eligible for the deduction. Repayment of loan is not eligible for deduction under section 80C. Contribution to unrecognized provident fund is not eligible for deduction here. Tuition fees paid for own child and up to maximum of two children, but here they are given only one child is eligible for deduction of 22,000. LIC premium due, if it is due during previous year, is not eligible for deduction here. Any interest accrued on national savings certificates is eligible for deduction. Contribution to public provident fund, not in his name, it was on his mother name, so it is not eligible to claim the deduction here. Deposited Sukanya Samruddha scheme, 8,000. So now, 2,700 plus 8, 10,700, 14,700, 36,700, 36 plus 5, 41, 49,700 is the total amount saved by the SSC on different options here and here amount of deduction eligible by Srinath for previous year 2022-23 will be 49,700 or maximum limit 1,50,000 whichever is less. So in this one 49,700 is the less amount where he can claim benefit here up to 49,700 from his total income. Crown number two Srikanth is the central government employee since 2008. He submits the following particulars of his income. Income from salary is 5 lakh. Income from other sources 2 lakhs. Contribution to public provident fund 70. Deposited in notified annuity plan 5000. Own contribution to national pension scheme 60. And employees contribution is 50,000. Now, salary received by the government employee 5 lakh. Income from other sources is 7 lakhs. Gross total income will be 7 lakhs a year. And deduction under section 80C contributed to public provident fund by the SSC 70,000. And deduction under section 80CC any plan which has been paid annuity plan that is eligible under 80CCC 5000. Deduction under section 80CC own contribution to NPS, employer's contribution to NPS will be 1 lakh and now maximum deductible amount will be 70,000, 5,000 and 10,000, 85,000 or 1 lakh 50,000 whichever is less. So 85,000 year. Now 1 lakh 85 is deducted out of 7 lakhs, so it will be 5 lakh 15,000. So NPS is 50,000, co employer's contribution to NPS 50,000, both is eligible for deduction here under section 80 CCC. So now we are going to check the maximum allowed limit under different subsections of 80. 80 C is maximum amount is 1 lakh 50. 80 CCC will be 1 lakh and 80 CCD will be 1 lakh 50 and 80 CCF will be 20,000 and next 80 D will be 1 lakh, 80 DD will be 1 lakh 25,000, 80 DDB will be 1 lakh. So here 1 lakh 50, 1 lakh, 1 lakh 50, 20,000, 1 lakh, 20,000 or 1 lakh here and 80 E 
for repayment of any education loan there is no maximum limit here whatever the amount paid by the assessee on the interest during previous year you can claim the benefit under section 80e on donation given to various charitable funds and other insurance and it may be for 50 percent to 100 percent amount donated may be claimed as the deduction here against hra for people who are not working in any organization as employee for those individuals under section 80 gg 5000 per month ATTTA, any interest earned on the savings account 10,000 or 50,000 and for taxpayers disability under section ATU is maximum is 1,25,000. Thank you to all our 5th SEM BBA students in today's session we solved two problems on section ATC as well as other sections where we have considered and guided you people what should be considered and what should be ignored. So understand the concept clearly and solve the problem. Namaste to all BBA students.